Let's be radically honest. The reason you decided to become an entrepreneur wasn't to put yourself last and sacrifice your health and well-being. You were looking for freedom. Imagine if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working any harder. Imagine if stress and overwhelm were a thing of the past. What if the way forward isn't about a brand new approach and all you need is a mindset shift instead? Business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of the underlying beliefs that are holding you back so you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be with you here uh, live, uh, whether you're live with me, you might be catching me on Facebook, you might be catching me on TV, you might be catching me on LinkedIn or on one of the many, many podcast places that we're at. Regardless of where you are, whether you're listening to this in the future or you're here with me today, thanks for coming to hang out with me. I am as always, I say this every week because I really am really excited to be talking about this. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, driving towards success, unveiling the universal laws for business, but with a very different approach. And so really, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I was on a adventure, and I took two weeks uh, in BC, and I drove, so I live in Red Deer, Alberta, in the country of Canada, and I drove from Red Deer uh, all the way out to see my son and his girl, Maya, and it is, I think, about a 14-hour trip, uh, including going across the ferry, and so I decided to take uh, some time it was an adventure and and I was guided to do this about in about May that I was going on an adventure and then at the end of May it was like I'm going to be going and, and hanging out with Jacob and Maya <clears throat> and I was to take time to drive out there now normally when I get in a vehicle uh, and this is kind of what my life has been a lot a lot like a lot you know, make a decision, set a goal, go for it. Don't look up, don't look sideways, uh, don't be in the present moment, always in the future, go, 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 driven, achievement oriented. And years ago, that part of my life changed in business and life. But when I travel, that's what I do. I, you know, I hit this destination on the GPS and I go, how fast can I get there? No time to stop, let's just go. So it was a real stretch for me to, A, uh, not make any plans other than two days before I knew what city I was going to be in and when, and I had friends that I could visit all the way through. So I didn't even look at it as a vacation because I had uh, had worked, you know, while I was gone, and I didn't even look at it as a working vacation. It was like I wanted an adventure. And because I set out to have an adventure, that's exactly what uh, what happened. And so I'm going to share some stories with you, some reflections and insights and um, exploring how I took this trip and was really able to look at my life, uh, the reflections, moments of reflections, and once again, look at the universal laws and integrate the two so I could embody the uh, embody what I was learning on the road into my business, into, into my life. So some of you may know me, some of you may not. My name is Ranchelle, Rand Rice, and of course you're here on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. And I am a reflector in human design, if you're into human design, and a passionate advocate for personal and professional growth. And what do I uh, actually mean about that? I have devoted my life to empowering women to realize their full potential to shine through their unique light and brilliance in the world. Uh, I'm a coach and my coaching approach is deeply personal and profoundly transformational. I work closely with women who are ready to go beyond the superficial. Uh, it's not light work to work with me. I, you know, yeah, I'm going to say it that way. It's not light work to work with me. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily work either. However, it, it's an adventure. <laughs> we, we explore the depths of, of who you are being uh, and allow you to rise to the next level of your life and business. My clients typically engage with me on a long-term basis because growth is a never-ending journey. Every new summit reached, every up-level achieved opened up a vista of further exploration and expansion. And my coaching is uh, unique. It's not cookie cutter approach, but one tailored specifically to you. And I share that with you because 
um, I certainly have a different methodology. It took me a while to even figure out what my methodology was, but uh, eventually I did. And it was it was this very unique approach. Part of it, because I'm a human design, uh, part, in human design, pardon me, I'm a reflector. So as a reflector, my perspective is very unique. In fact, less than 1% of the world is a reflector. And so this is one of my superpowers and I bring it full on when I'm coaching with people. I provide insights and guidance so that you can see yourself, your strengths, and your challenges in a very different light. And so that's what I want to do today. I want to talk about my experience with you, share a little bit more about who I am and what I do throughout the show as well. And so um, first and foremost, the day that I left Red Deer, and, uh, and I almost didn't go because two weeks before I left, my father had uh, a minor procedure. He went in to see if he needed a stent. And he, um, heart disease runs in my family. And so he had been experiencing some heart challenges the last three years of his life. And so every time he went in, the surgeons told him that he uh, did not need a stent. And he was always very disappointed because he just felt like something was off. So he went in uh, almost a month ago, I think right now, and went in for this minor, well, it's not minor, but the stent uh, surgery and in the recovery room, after he was told he did need a stand, he had a massive heart attack. <clears throat> and I share that with you, not to shock and awe you, but um, to this is part of the experience of, you know, there was a voice in my head. You know, my dad was fine. He was on life support for days. He's a miracle. The doctors and nurses are, are talking about this miracle um, that he is. And that is a whole other episode that I'll do. And I'll talk about my dad and the miracle that happened with him. There was a part of me, though, that wanted to, um, even though both my mom and dad said, uh, no, you've had this trip, right, uh, planned, uh, you, uh, I made a commitment to, to Jacob and Maya to bring some stuff because uh, I had some of their stuff in the back of my vehicle. And so I was torn between the commitment that I made to Jacob and feeling like I needed to be a good daughter, quote, air quote, that, and stay with my dad. Now, my dad was staying in the hospital in Edmonton, which is 90 minutes away from where I am. I live in Red Deer. My mom and dad have a condo in Edmonton. So I knew that when I was traveling back and forth, I could stay with my mom and dad. But again, part of this experience was having this pull, and perhaps maybe you've had this, where you have this desire, this intuitive uh, nature, um, you know, uh, a, a magnificent obsession, maybe even of something that you so want to do, and you know that it would be good for your soul. And then the logical side of you, the actual what I call the not self or the false self starts telling you what you should be doing, you should stay home and be a good daughter, you should stay home and, and make sure that you carry some of the load because my sister who lives in Edmonton, um, is carrying a lot of the load because she lives in Edmonton. My other sister is, is Colleen and she's in sickness. So, so part of the adventure for me was um, setting aside, you know, like on Tinder, I think Tinder is still a thing where you swipe left because it's a no, <laughs> swiping left on the thought that I had to stay to be a good girl. I had to stay to show my mom and dad how much I love them, even though my mom and dad were like, you need to go. So there was part of my conditioning of what a good daughter would do. When I moved through that, as I'm leaving Red Deer and I'm I'm taking the long way, um, even into Sycamus, which is my first stop was to see my sister Colleen and her family. And so as I'm leaving Red Deer, I'm, I'm listening to, uh, very briefly, I listened to this voice of, a uh, hurry up and get there you're on a schedule um, and then this other voice says you should make more stops and enjoy your life and all of this shitting I was shitting on myself for about two hours and finally at my first stop uh, at the David Thompson something or other right I stopped and um, I'm looking at this beautiful mountain and I'm watching a child and her mom and I realize that I can just stop with the noise in my head and be so appreciative of, and this is the first um, first uh, story I really want to share. The first aha moment was to accept the decision that I made and I didn't need a plan. So I made a decision. I was going on an adventure. I listened to my higher self about going on an adventure. 
I made the decision to go on the adventure. And for the first time ever, I didn't have every moment of the trip planned. I, I, I let go of my need for controlling the outcome. I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted. And a couple of days before I thought, okay, I need to like connect with my family and friends to let them know when I'm going to be there. Cause all throughout, I had this uh, amazing opportunity to stay mostly with family and friends. And so that was the first, my first aha moment was things always work out ramshell, right? Like you don't have to plan every single moment of every single day. You can pause you can allow the experience to wash over you. And so the moment I made this decision at, um, at this at David Thompson stop on one of the highways, I'm sorry, I can't remember the highway um, here. And I just relaxed. And I started to really see the, the scenery. Now, if you've never traveled the Rocky Mountains, regardless of where you are in the world, I highly recommend it. There's nothing like our Rocky Mountains. And so I'm traveling through and I'm going through the national park where there's Banff and I'm going through Golden and I'm going through Revelstoke. Each city I stopped and not because I needed to, but because I decided to, well, two things, honor my body and stretch my legs. Um, and so that was one, but also just take in the moment to uh, make as many not even pit stops into the cities, but even before or after. If there was an exit uh, that appealed to me, I would do that. And I had my GPS on all the time. Now, I didn't have my GPS on because I didn't know how to get there because it's pretty straightforward. You know, you take Highway 16, I think it is, Highway 1, right? and, and you go, like you just stay on this highway and you'll get where you want to go. What it was, though, for me was this, it was a guide. And so, you know, as it was telling me that there would be different delays at different times because there's lots of construction, it reminded me of how many times, so this is the second one I want to share with you, how many times I'm guided by divine source energy. And it is like a voice, like my GPS, slow down, <laughs> there's going to be a pause, right? There's construction ahead all of those things. And it, um, it allowed me to also, because uh, I drive fast, to take a minute and drive the speed limit. And because of that, I was able to, again, I wasn't so focused on getting to the end. I was less focused on the destination. I know that's really cliche, but I was really looking forward to experiencing the journey. And every time I made a stop, I would engage somebody in conversation. I'd ask them how they were, where are they from, where they were traveling to. If there was kids, I'd have a conversation with the kids. How old were they? All of those kinds of things. And it really was um, such a beautiful reminder of connection can be simple. So that was the other piece. And I'm going to tie this all together with universal laws, but that connection can be really simple. And we complicate the crap out of stuff. So if, I, if I'm thinking about like from a business perspective, right, I don't need to know all of the pit stops. I just need to know where I'm going, right? Um, the second one is take the time and enjoy the journey of your business, your profession, right? And thirdly, it's simple to make connection. And if you're finding it difficult, there's a limiting belief that you're believing about yourself or others or sales or marketing or something about your business or profession, and you're making it more difficult than it really is. It is so simple to connect. You can smile and say hi. Now, you might not be able to do that in the same thing online if you're only connecting online, which I highly recommend you don't just connect online. You actually like go and meet people. Right? Virtual coffees are great, um, right? A lot of us just totally went into virtual, um, the virtual reality uh, in, in 2020. And a lot of us didn't change some of that, right? But a connection is simple. And it can be life-changing, even if it's just simply a hello. 
because there is an exchange of energy, right? My aura field uh, touching your aura field, there's an entanglement of quantum physics, there's some sort of connection. And uh, from that connection, amazing things can happen. You never know what will come from an opportunity of connection in life and or business. So these three pieces, right? These three amazing aha moments I had in my first four hours of my trip. <laughs> it was just like, boom, and then boom. Now, how I process things is I, I meditate and I journal. So I knew I was having an experience but truthfully, I didn't um, see the significance of the experience until days later as I was contemplating and, um, and driving. Because a lot of the time in the mountains, there's no, of course, internet, which means there's no radio. So you're in silence. I had many, many, many hours of silence. And that was one of the things I was super concerned about was the silence. What will I do? What will I think about? I was stressing about where my ADHD brain was going to go. And it was beautiful because it, it went wherever it was guided to go, right? Divine stepped in to share so many amazing messages. Now I have lots more to share with you. Super excited. But let's go to our first break and then we will continue the story of my adventure and how we're going to apply it to the universal laws and to your business. Thanks so much. My name is Ranchel and you're here with me on Inspired Choices Network. Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Don't you just love my new music? I'm just, I, I loved the first music I had. I love the second music. I'm just grooving here, right? We should go dance. Let's go hang out, right? Let's go hang out. Um, every time I come and do a show, I also pull a card. And sometimes I share it and sometimes I don't. But today I was compelled to share it. And two uh, cards pulled out, popped out. Now, this is from uh, Colette Baron Reed, her Oracle card deck. I've had this deck for a long time. I can't even tell you how old it is. Um, and I pulled the card, the compass. I don't know if you can see that, the compass card. And here's the message for us um, about the compass card. You're entering uncharted territories right now and can expect wonderful new experiences. I laughed when I read that. To stay on the highest path of your destiny, you'll need to keep your compass pointed to your true north. Only spirit or a higher power can serve this function. Money, property, prestige, romance, and other material achievements cannot help you find your true path. They are simply things you may experience along the journey. Know that spirit is working in your life. So even if you feel lost temporarily, it will be easy to find your way. Have faith and trust 
for your compass with spirit as true north will ensure that you'll never be lost even on a starless night when all seems dark isn't that awesome i just i love ah uh, that i always there's no such thing as coincidences i love the synchronicity of everything that happens and so before we left i shared you know, a little bit about you know, the beginning of my journey and the three things that I actually learned, the experiences I had on my first day. And when I talked a little bit about how this applies to business as well, I think everything in life, like how you do one thing is how I think we do everything. So how you do one thing is how you do everything and it will show up. And so it's certainly for me, some of the things you know, uh, for example, making a decision of what I want and just going for it, not worrying about how I'm going to uh, exactly the steps that I'll get there, right, um, will happen. On a trip, right, you make the decision of where you want to go. I made the decision I was going to Victoria, British Columbia. I made the decision that I wanted to meander. I wanted it to be an adventure. It wasn't about just getting there. And then I turned the GPS on. Your GPS is your true north, your connection to divine. I turned it on. The GPS, our spirit, divine self, our true north, our intuition guides us. Will let us know if we're going the wrong way, right? I made a wrong turn on one of the mountain peaks, and it was like you're going the wrong way. It wasn't quite like that. It wasn't like you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. It was like turn left uh, in the next 50 kilometers. I was like, oh yeah. So if I don't, you know, detour, if I don't do a U-turn right now, I'm going to be going the complete opposite direction. But the cool thing is, I didn't panic. I was like, okay, I can do this. I'll find a place to turn around or I will take a detour and it'll just take me a bit longer to get there. No big deal. That's how we can approach life. Oh, I took a detour. No big deal. And just exploring what your, det your detour might look like for you. So I arrived in Sycamus my first day and I had the pleasure of spending two days with my sister and her granddaughter. Um, and her husband, so Colleen Glenn and um, Isla. And so uh, Colleen and Glenn have this beautiful home on the mountain uh, side of Sycamus with this incredible view of the lake. And she was the first of many of people that I stayed with that asked what I wanted to do, like what I wanted, what, what adventures as far as like, yeah, what, what scenes I wanted to be. Even I would say not even adventures, but what attractions I wanted to go to. And really what I wanted was just to be, and I didn't want to plan anything. And I didn't want people to feel like they, they needed to entertain me, right? And so I went and said, I just want to hang out with you. I want to be in your space and whatever happens, happens. And we'll, you know, we'll do that. And it was fantastic because there was no pressure on any one of us to do anything. And I just, I just had this opportunity to sit in quiet, sit in solitude, um, uh, Colleen is a yoga instructor and so she was teaching yoga and Glenn and, and Isla were busy so I had so much time just to sit and contemplate and it was beautiful and what I realized as I was sitting and contemplating is that uh, the environments that I choose to be in so this is the other piece the uh, the environments that I choose to be in are really important to me now as an empath, I feel people's energies. As a reflector, I mirror back the energy. So I'm kind of like, I would say the empath on steroids. Now, I don't absorb people's energies. I've, I have tips and tools so that I don't do that. So if you're an empath and you feel people's energies and you're absorbing it, connect with me. Um, my, the email is rvb uh, at, at uh, gmail com rvb at gmail.com you can just uh, simply um, email me there or rvb at ignite your success uh, dot com as, or dot ca pardon me as well we'll have that sorry we'll have that in the write-up but either way i'm easy to find google me you'll find me because you you don't need to absorb other people's energies so i realized then how important my environment was that i really need to love where i am but the only person who can decide that or decide if I'm in the wrong environment is me, but the guidance through me. So my divine me, not my false self-egoic grandchild. So again, it was this reminder of staying connected to divine source energy. So as I'm looking over this um, beautiful view and just loving the view and loving my life, I had so much gratitude. 
right, for, for my creations and my manifestations. And I gratitude that my dad was still alive. And so that's one of the universal laws that I talk a lot about, which is being grateful for every experience. So even the experience of my dad having this massive heart attack in the recovery room at the hospital, um, the miracles that happened. So even before the miracle happened, as I was praying that he would, we, we, uh, we as a collective prayed that he would be alive and fully functional at 100% or that he would be taken home because my mom and dad were very clear about the lifestyle that they wanted and they actually have a DNR in place. And that one of the miracles was, was that the DNR was um, not told to the surgeon that did the stent. It wasn't in the file or something like that. Like, and it really is a miracle. I know people are like, oh my God, that's awful. Well, yes and no, my dad is still alive and he's recovering. And he has no brain damage, like all the things that you would think would happen have not happened. And so I was in my present moment that day as well. And every day that I was driving, I was in my present moment, experiencing the experiences and just so damn grateful for everything. And so we can, where our life can be like that. We, we can create and manifest like we, we, well, we do, we create and manifest, of course, everything that we focus on. And so if I'm only focused on the destination and getting there as fast as I can, and I've done that, there really is this lack of a, a lackluster approach to life. Uh, you know, let's just do it and get in there and, you know, it'd be very like that energy is very stressful for me, as I know it is for other um, entrepreneurial women. So as I'm in this, in Sikkimus, I leave and, and the next leg of my trip, uh, I'm going to Kamloops to see a friend and uh, a new client. And I'm driving and I'm um, realizing that before I left, there was a challenge that I was trying, an obstacle that I was facing. And I realized on the second leg of my adventure that I was trying really hard to figure shit out. I was using my head to come up with a solution to what I deemed was a problem. And in the middle of just before I got into, into Kamloops, it's very dry in Kamloops, very hot. The topography is so much different than Sikkimus, which is only like an hour and 15 minutes away, I think. And I'm realizing that I've spent weeks, weeks trying to figure out this problem. And I was reminded again that I can't figure out a problem with the same mind, the same brain pan that actually created said problem. I was reminded again that I was just to let go. So in um, Alateen, we had this uh, let go and let God. If God is a word that triggers you, then use a different word, higher power, Allah, spirit, divine intelligent, divine, like whatever, intuition, use your words not mine. But I realized that there was nothing for me to figure out. That me trying to figure shit out just kept me locked in this problem that I was having, this experience. Because it really isn't a problem either. It's an experience. But I got to tell you, it felt like a problem, right? And trying to figure, figure it out. And it was racking my brain when I realized I had nothing to figure out. That it was going to, that in, in the end, I was on the journey and it was going to unfold the way it was meant to unfold. So I might as well just relax, put on some music and enjoy the ride and see the, the opportunities, the benefits, the blessings of said quote unquote problem. And it shifted for me. It made this huge difference. Um, as I'm driving into Kamloops, Kamloops, Kamloops to realize I got nothing to figure out. I can just enjoy my day. The solution will unfold. The key, the key though, to unfold said solution is to stop asking why and start asking what else is possible. When you ask what else is possible, so in the world of the universal laws, when you ask what else is possible, you're asking the formless substance, the quantum, right? Divine intelligence. You're asking whatever, again, your word, to step up, to show you the way. 
because you have nothing to figure out. And your, your need for safety and security, your need to figure shit out is what's keeping you stuck. It's keeping you in your groundhog day. And that can be in life and business. I mean, whatever, insert whatever word, right? And so if we just allow the universal law, so that's the law of attraction as an example, and the universal law of thinking, if we just allow the laws to work with and through us, allowing spirit to work with and through us, the answers will unfold. Stop trying to figure shit out. Stop it. Because it's not helping. It's keeping you stuck. Your need to figure shit out is what's keeping you stuck. Yeah, I know. I can feel some of you getting a little bit, you know, upset <laughs> at that. Right? And that's part of my role as a reflector is to share with you the patterns that I see and turn your pain into promise. Turn your pain into solution. By saying there, stop trying to figure shit out would be one of those things. All right, let's go to our next break. Super excited that you're here with me. Whether you're here live, or you're joining in afterwards. Fantastic. Don't go anywhere. Let's just quickly, we'll go to our break. My name is Ranchelle. You're here at Inspired Choices Network. And the show is Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Thanks. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ranchal Van Bryce, and I am an um, intuitive business coach. Sometimes I call myself a business intuitive coach. It goes both ways. Uh, and I'm sharing my journey, uh, my adventure that I took uh, from Red Deer, Alberta to Victoria. I took about um, a 13 day trip and I really was able to reflect on how all of these things were unfolding for my benefit. All of these things were unfolding for me. Nothing was happening to me. And the really exciting piece of this was <clears throat> along the way, every morning I do a call first thing, um, 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I have a group of incredible women that join me. And it's called the Pathway to Success Call. And every morning I got to share this part of my adventure, the things that I was learning. And so this is one of the, one of the um, things that I do this morning call, called Pathway to Success. And, you know, um, I have been doing it for almost, <clears throat> I think I'm a week away to, to three years, three and a half years maybe. I really should count one day how many how many days in a row it's been. But it's almost, it's about 360 days a year that I do this. And I want to invite you to, um, to possibly explore that with me, to, you know, talk about um, awakening your brilliance. You know, so each morning we start with divine guidance and to, to transform your life and business. And so what happens is, it's a, it's a journey where I have an opportunity to channel messages for you. Um, and so it's kind of whatever's going on in your life, whatever I see happening globally, I get this message to share. 
and I channel this fresh divine message tailored to your journey. Um, often I'm told that they're mic drop moments. Sometimes I remember what I say, sometimes I don't. But there's definitely, I would say, a, a blend of unique spiritual enlightenment and then pragmatic business acumen. So if that little bit that I share with you resonates with you, connect with me. I'd love to have a conversation with you to see if that would be a great fit uh, for you. And because I'd love for you to join. I have this mission uh, to have a thousand women on a call every single day <laughs> and to channel messages so that we can make the world. And again, it's cliche, but we can change the world. We can transmute our pain into uh, our alignment, into our purpose. And so if that, if that feels good to you, uh, let me know. So welcome back. Uh, I'm sharing my journey and how my experiences I was able to see all along the way to Victoria and back of what I was meant to take away from my adventure. I knew I was to be on an adventure. I knew it was going to be life altering and I was open to all of the possibilities. And so I'm always reminded and I mean, I mean, well, often I'm often reminded to be in my present moment because I'm a future forward thinker and I sometimes miss what's happening. This became really apparent when I was driving from uh, my next stent was from Kamloops to Chilliwack. So between Kamloops and Chilliwack is um, a road called the Coquihalla. Now in the mountains, the speed limit is anywhere from 90 kilometers. There's a very small section that's 110 kilometers. In Canada, uh, so I don't know about the States, we tend to drive you know, anywhere from five to 10 kilometers over the speed limit. And then if you do that, you often, not always, don't get pulled over by the, uh, by the police. So you don't get a ticket. But the Coquihalla is 120 kilometers. That's the speed limit. <laughs> And so, and, and it's, there's, it's like twisty and turning. Now it's like lots of lanes, like it's two or sometimes three lane traffic split up. So like four to six lanes, you know, with a, like, um, with a border in, in between, like, but still it was the mountains. And I remember driving and I was, I, I wasn't driving 120 kilometers. I wasn't confident enough to drive 120 kilometers while I was driving there. So I was driving about 115 and people were driving by me like I was standing still. So I'm talking people are driving 130 kilometers, 140 kilometers. But me and the big trucks, the big rigs, we weren't. <laughs> the big rigs were hauling stuff. So they were on the very right hand with their four-way flashes on trying to get up the mountain. And I was um, beside them trying not to like poop my pants. <laughs> so, and I was gripping the steering wheel. And I'm, I'm a confident driver, but I wasn't confident at all. And I remember just praying and saying, okay, I can, you know, I'm making this effort. I can do this. I'm an experienced driver. I'm, I'm a confident driver. I just need to relax. And so I started to like loosen my grip, but I was also very clear that I had to be in my present moment. I couldn't, my mind could not meander meander or wander I had to stay in my body and in my vehicle so that I had more confidence in myself and like I said I'm often in I'm often uh, intuiting I'm often like feeling energy and it reminded me that there's a time and place for that. And there's a time and place to be in my damn body, in my vehicle, <laughs> paying attention to all the things that were going around. And there was lots. There's like vehicles everywhere, twisting and turning, right? And it was interesting because I noticed that there wasn't as many exit stops opened to pause, to experience <clears throat> The, the scenery to experience the topography it was like you're going someplace hang on let's go and it was beautiful because I got to experience how I could meander in one moment four kilometers later 
no meandering, pay attention, girlfriend, you know, be present. And I, you know, when I, when I um, arrived in Chilliwack at my next destination, I realized <laughs> that there were many times when I'm avoiding something or um, I'll, I'll use procrastinating or, uh, or I have fear that I'm not in my present moment. And I started to really be in awareness of, am I in, like, if, while I'm eating, am I in my present moment? When I'm with, uh, my partner's name is Rob, when I'm with Rob, am I in my present moment? When I was talking to clients, I knew that I was in my present moment with my clients. And so I was like, how can I show up like that in other areas of my life? Because it's not any more difficult to show up present or not present, but it's awareness. And so this beautiful gift that I was given driving from Kamloops to, to Chilliwack in the Coquihalla was this opportunity of how do I know? How can I tell when I'm in my present moment? And so what about you and your profession or business? Are you in your present moment? And how difficult that can be? Because you know what? We plan stuff. We're doing marketing. We're working on the next quarter, right? We're working on what's happening next. So what strategies or tactics do you have in place to bring yourself into your present moment? Do you have a morning a routine, an evening routine, a mid-after routine, or do you not? Do you not even know if you're in your present moment? So I'm going to encourage you to just be in awareness of what that might look like for you and how possibly you might need to show up differently. So be in the now. Again, it's a cliche statement, but there's so much. There's so much golden in that. So much golden in that. All right. So the next leg of the trip um, from Chilliwack to Victoria, tons of traffic, tons and tons of traffic, um, narrow, narrow highways, a ferry to get on, um, you know, all of that was brand new. I'd never driven the Coquihalla or through Vancouver um, into Victoria on my own. I'd never ventured doing that kind of driving on my own. And I was really, I was really nervous. I wasn't scared, but I was nervous. And so I, I was excited to know that I could do it, that I, I, you know, take my time. Um, you know, I planned, like I said, I had a destination of mine and then, and then I had like stops and I had my GPS going. And I was so grateful because the GPS took me off, like I would be driving and it would take me on a different course based on where, what was going on with the traffic we have our own GPS, right? We have connection to divine source energy who might say, nah, you like, it's a better road over here, <laughs> right? Go here instead. Um, and do we listen? Do we listen to the GPS? And so, you know, when I got to, to Victoria, uh, it's so different. Um, Victoria is so different, even than other areas of, of British Columbia, certainly different than Alberta. And so Jacob and his girl, um, girlfriend Maya, took me around. And we were uh, looking at some of the houses at, right along the other line. And these houses have been in, in families for a long time. Um, and they're like absolutely, some of them are absolutely breathtaking and right on the ocean. Like I'm talking like step out in the front yard. There's the road. There's the ocean. And we And we had this amazing opportunity to like, you know, uh, play this game of what do you think that they do, and um, and wh where do you think they're they're from, and imagining what their houses looked like inside based on the exterior, and we started looking at the architect or ar architect uh, architecture and new modern all glass versus old Victorian, and had these really great conversations, and I was reminded and reminded the kids. Well, their kids are 23, 21, um, to, to dream, that, it, that it's okay to dream. And so Jacob being, of course, in my life, dreams lots, 
right? He just like, wouldn't that be cool if, or what about this? 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 But Maya, that's new for her. And so I was reminded, so this is the other piece that I want to share with you. I was reminded that we're not all the same. Again, cliche, I get it. But Maya's upbringing was, is so different than Jacob's and so different than who I am. And it was so interesting to listen to her point of view, to hear what she was saying, and to ask her these really awesome, deep uh, questions so that I could understand her. And so I think one of the things that we do as the human species is we speak to be understood and we don't listen to understand now I've said that before but it was really um in in my with my coaching group but it was really apparent really apparent to me about having different conversations so it's also attached to that being in the present moment now how is this attached to business if in marketing (laughs) if you're seeking to be heard and you're seeking to be understood in your marketing message, I bet you it's not working. I bet your marketing message isn't working because you're seeking something different. But what if instead you sought out to understand, to have conversations, to, yes, you have a, you know, as a business owner, we we have a solution to different problems. But what if you worded it in a way where you started having conversation and it wasn't just about buy this, do this. There's nothing wrong with sales. Let me be clear. If we don't have sales, we don't do marketing. We don't have a business. We have a hobby. But I'm going to say if your marketing efforts and your sales efforts aren't working, that it's not because you need a different system. You don't need a different foundation. I would say you just need to look at it differently. And I bet you're looking at it through the lens of somebody's business model that you're following. You're not following your inner GPS. You're following somebody else's. And what if you could do that that differently? What if you could figure that out, right? Um, When I figured that out for myself, and that's one of the things I talk about quite a bit in the morning calling with my one-to-one coaching, is doing things your way, the way that you're designed, not the way that somebody else is designed. Um, And in fact, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have an entire show on that. Uh, Stop following the gurus, start listening to your intuition, right? Um, Because I think that's so very, very important. And so are you you listening? Are you just seeking to, to, uh, to be understood. All right, we're going to go to our next and final break. My goodness, I could be here for two hours. If 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 Inspired Choices would let me, I would be here for two hours. Anyhow, let's go to our next break. Thanks so much, everyone. Looking forward to winding this up for you. Again, my name is Ron Child. We're on Ignite Your, we're on, it's part of the Inspired Choices Network. And the show is Ignite Your Success with Ron Child. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. So the second card that uh, fell out was clean, uh, cleaning house. And it's that card, but it was actually reversed. And so the card reversed means, why do you hold on to things that remind you 
of the past. Is your home cluttered with objects that bring up unhappy memories? Do you have a tendency to attract broken people who need to be fixed? If you're involved in this type of emotional project, stop right now and clean house. Being needed isn't going to get you what you really need. That said, even if you initially resist letting go of excess physical or emotional baggage, you'll feel amazing afterwards. Let go and let the universe bring you something better. Make space. The universe doesn't like a vacuum and will respond to your house cleaning by filling your home with that which will serve you. So those are the two messages um, from Divine uh, that came about today. So again, thank you so much for coming back. All right. Um, let me wrap this up by uh, sharing a couple of last experiences. So there are messages everywhere. And it's about, are you open to hearing? Because it might not show up the way that you think it's going to show up. And this trip was a perfect example for me. And that's why I was so excited to share with share it with you. On the way back from Victoria, I arrived at the ferry at quarter after 11 and thought, I'd be lucky if I get on the noon ferry, but for sure the one o'clock. And I was told by this, um, the woman uh, um, at the toll booth, that maybe I'd get on the two o'clock, but for sure the three o'clock. And little did I know that there were two ferries that were canceled that day. And so the wait time was way, way longer. So I'm sitting, um, you know, uh, after the toll booth, there's this place where everyone, so they give you a lane to go in. And they tell you like, when you hear this, go back to your vehicle, but you know, you can roam around and there's like a little shopping center and, and there was like um, food and stuff like that. But I got to like be in the environment of just watching people and going for a walk and just, you know, hanging out and talking to some people. And when I left, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't upset that it was late. I wasn't like, I had a plan. I had plans. In fact, I had two people that I was going to uh, see in Chilliwack, which isn't very far, right? It's three and a half hours, four hours from where I was. And I had to cancel, um, had to cancel, couldn't even postpone both of those. And was I disappointed that things didn't work out the way that I had planned? Yes. But did I know there was a reason why? Yes. And so I allowed myself to be disappointed because there's two people that I really wanted to see that I that I didn't haven't seen for a long time. One person I wanted to see who I'd never met in person, who just was hanging out on Zoom. But I wasn't, I didn't get upset. I knew that there, and I didn't know the reason. I still don't know the reason why there was a delay, other than I think, I should say I don't know the reason, other than this whole opportunity for me to contemplate. Because I, I got to spend two and a half extra hours um, just hanging out in my own thoughts, in my own thoughts. And I learned so much. There's so much adventure and still there's more that I could share. And I'll kind of weave the adventure into my future shows. But there was just so much opportunity for me in this adventure of letting go of what no longer serves me. And every day I journaled on and reflected upon what no longer is serving me, what showed up for me that no longer serves me, and what direction, now not the plan, what direction do I want to go? What am I looking to manifest? What am I looking to create? What does that look like? What does it feel like? What kind of experiences do I want along the way? And so the, this adventure that I had, like your life, you can apply, you can integrate and embody all the universal laws so that you can create an epic life. You can be, do, and have whatever it is that you want because we're meant for more. Spirit works through us and allows us to have experiences so that we can create this epic life that we all want. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Ranchell returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold. 
be brilliant. Be you.